Okay, let's take a look at a problem involving maximum average power transfer. This example is going to be a great review of everything that we've done thus far. Maximum average power transfer works very similar to maximum power transfer uh, for which there was a video uh, earlier uh, involving only resistive networks. Um, so our steps are very similar. We're going to solve for the Thevenin equivalent. Um, we are working with impedances now rather than resistance and we have a very similar relationship, uh, slightly different. The load impedance is the complex conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. And that whole idea uh, plays out especially when we actually calculate the power you'll find that the power absorbed in the load is only absorbed by the resistors in an RCL network um, and you'll kind of see how this um, relationship here m makes that uh, make a little bit uh, more sense okay so let's start by um, drawing our uh, or working towards our Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now notice that we have a dependent uh, and an independent source here which means that we're going to have to use the method um, of calculating removing the load and then calculating the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. Um, so to do that we'll begin by Oops, hold on just a second here. We're going to do that by um, redrawing the circuit with the load removed and we'll short across the load and then look for the short circuit current. Uh, to do this I'm going to use a uh, nodal analysis approach and so you can see that uh, I've done a couple of things. First of all, I've labeled the super node. Notice also that I redrew the circuit. This isn't necessary. However, it made my um, nodal analysis just a little bit easier. I can change the location of the uh, resistor and the voltage source here without altering this, uh, this circuit significantly. And it allows me to not have to worry about this node right here. Um, okay, so I've labeled my um, node voltages, V1 and V2, and I've chosen all of my branch current directions, and now I'll just go ahead and apply KCL at the node, or at the super node, and we'll say that going into the super node is positive. So I get, for KCL, at the super node. I get 12 minus V1 over 1, which could just be 12 minus V1. This is going out here, so we'll call this negative, and that's V1 over 2. This is also going out, so we'll put a negative sign here. This is V2 over negative J and this is negative V2 over 2 over J2 and that equals 0. Recall that when you do a supernode there is always going to be an auxiliary equation. Okay, In this case our auxiliary equation is that V2 minus V1 equals the source. So V1, I'm sorry, V2 minus V1 equals 2IX. So now we have two equations, but we have three unknowns. So we're going to need to have an additional auxiliary equation. And we want to rewrite IX in terms of V1 and V2. We can achieve that 
by noticing that ix is v over r, v1 over 2. And now we have a system of equations with three equations and three unknowns, and that's solvable. You can do it out by hand, um, or you can do it on a TI-89, or you can do it in any number of ways. I'm going to use Mathematica. So here's the system of equations that I've written. Okay, A couple of features to remember. Um, we use double equals for our equations. Commas separate each of the three equations. And because we have more than one equation, we have curly braces uh, to denote that we're creating a list of uh, equations. Okay. Also, I want Mathematica to return this in a numerical format, so I've added this uh, to the end of the equation. When we run that, we'll find that we get uh, our current and our two um, node voltages. Really, notice that all I really care about here is V2, because once I have V2, I can say V2 divided by J2 equals the short circuit current. So what I'll do is I'll just grab this little solution here and I'll um, paste it in and then I'll select it all and use control forward slash to divide and we're going to divide it by 2j which is 2i and you can do I with an uppercase capital I, or you could also just do escape, double I, escape. Okay? And we'll uh, solve for that. And we get that our short circuit current is negative 3.69 minus 5.53 I. Okay? So I'm going to record that down here now. I short circuit equals minus 3.692 minus 5.538 J. Um, and people will have different ways of wanting to approach these problems. Some people like to do the problems in uh, polar coordinates if they're doing multiplication and division and complex coordinates if they're doing it uh, if they're solving other types of things. My process is to always keep convert everything to complex form until I need um, a magnitude or a phase shift. Okay, so uh, I'm going to work in complex form until the very end here. Okay, now we're ready to solve for the open circuit voltage. To do that, we'll redraw the circuit, okay, and we'll draw it open, and we're looking for VOC. Notice that in this particular circuit, VOC, this inductor, completely does nothing, and so we could just imagine that it's not there. So we're simply looking for the voltage across the capacitor here. So I'll choose my um, mesh loops. And notice, you can pick them any way you want. I like to pick my mesh current, especially for the part in mind, so that it follows the passive sign convention for the voltage that I'm specifically looking for. It might help me prevent, uh, prevent uh, from making a mistake. Okay, so now let's apply uh, KVL at both of these meshes. I'll start here, and I'm going to start in the lower left-hand corner and work my way around. Minus 12 plus, and by the way, I'm using A and B here. Um, if you're doing it in Mathematica or if you're doing it in um, on a calculator, it can, might help you to prevent mistakes if you use variables that are easy to type into your program or that uh, your calculator provides for you. So I'm just going to call this A and B. Okay, this is 1 times A. Okay, and then through the positive terminal again, I get 2 
times a minus b, and that equals zero. My next KVL equation, I'll start in the lower left-hand corner again. I get minus 2 times a minus b minus 2ix plus negative j times b equals 0. And finally, because I have this dependent source, I'm going to have an extra equation. And that extra equation says that ix is equal to a minus b. So I have three equations, three unknowns, and now I can plug it into Mathematica and get a result. And I've solved the equation right here, or I've set up the equation to be solved right here, my three equations, okay? And I solve them, and what I'm looking for all I really care about is b, because once I have the current for b, I can multiply b times negative j and get voc. Okay, so I'm going to take the solution for b, which is right here, and copy it. And I'll take this, and important thing to remember uh, is to use parentheses so that you're distributing um, uh, your values correctly. And I'm going to multiply this by negative i. Oops. And also, I don't want to subtract. I'm just going to make sure that this is definitely multiplying here. And the answer is uh, actually quite obvious. When you multiply this through by i, these i's will cancel and make this value um, uh, negative, I'm sorry, positive, and then this value will come on, this negative i will be attached to 7.68 and make that negative. So the terms switch and the sign in the middle changes. Okay, so that's our open circuit voltage, and let's write that down. VOC equals 5.76 minus 7.68i, or j. Okay, and with this, we're now ready to construct our Thevenin equivalent circuit. Uh, because instead of having a Thevenin resistance, we're going to have a Thevenin impedance. And Z Thevenin will simply equal V over VOC over ISC just like in our previous examples of Thevenin equivalent circuits. Okay, so I'm going to set up uh, this equation, and I'll just do it right over in Mathematica. Okay, so I have this 5.76, and because it's the last thing that I calculated in Mathematica, I'm just going to say percent, and that'll take the last thing I calculated, and it will divide it by and if I look up in my code here, somewhere I have the, oops, the short circuit current, and it's right here. Okay, so I'll just copy this and place it into the denominator. And I'll evaluate that, okay? And I come up with 0.47 plus 1.36i, okay, or 0.48. So this is going to be 0.48 plus 1.36j, and that's ohms. Okay, so now we can redraw our circuit, and we have a voltage source. And we have a Z Thevenin. And we have a Z load. And remember that the load is just the complex conjugate. So this is 0.48 plus 1.36 J. And this is 0.48 
minus 1.36j. Okay, and then this is this voltage is for now we'll just leave it in complex form 5.76 minus 7.68j. And while we're at it, let, let's just solve that voltage and turn it into a phasor because that's how it's usually uh, when you when you write this final Thevenin circuit out that's the form that you'll usually want to put it into okay so what we'll do is we'll take our Thevenin voltage this 5.76 value here and I'm going to paste it into this little piece of code that I've already written and this little piece of code is going to return the magnitude and the angle of our complex form. Okay, so it's 9.6 at an angle of 50, negative 53.13. 9.6 at an angle of negative 53.13. Uh, Okay, and now we're supposed to find the load that is the actual power that is transferred. So what we've done is we've set up a Thevenin equivalent circuit and we found the impedance that we could place into this circuit to uh, have maximum power transfer occur. Now we want to figure out, well, how much power actually is transferred. And to do that, let's solve for the um, current in this uh, network. The current, of course, will be V over R, or V over Z, should I say. And so we'll get uh, 5.76 minus 7.68 J over... Now look what happens here. We have plus 1.36j minus 1.36j, and so those just go away, and we get 0.48 times 2. Okay, and that's going to give us our current. And I don't know what that is offhand, so I'll just calculate it really quickly. So I'm going to take the um, voltage here. And I'm going to divide it by 2 times 0.48. And I get 6 uh, minus 8i. Okay. Now that I have this 6 minus 8i, I'm ready to start thinking about maximum power transfer. Recall that maximum power transfer, the average maximum power transfer, is going to be i squared r over 2. And when they say i in any of these uh, power transfer equations that we're using where we have... Um, phasers and stuff, what they're talking about is the magnitude of I. So we need to find the magnitude of I. So we're going to have to take this value that we've just obtained and we're going to need to take that and place it and turn it into phasor form. Okay, so I'll just copy this input text and I'll place it back into this little piece of code that solves for the phasor form. Okay and I'll get 10 at negative 53.13. Okay, so I also equals 10 at negative 53.13. And so now power then simply equals I squared, which is 10 squared, times R, and remember we're doing the power 
absorbed by the load. So we're just looking at a single, just the single resistor here. Recall that with the complex form, the real part of the complex form is the resistance. Okay, so that's going to be 0.48 and the whole thing divided by 2. Okay, and if you solve that out, you will find that this equals 24 watts. And so that's how you solve those kinds of equations. And that was a really good review of a whole bunch of stuff that we've gone over uh, over all of the past videos. So I hope that's helpful and good luck.